Hi, I'm your host, Rico Beer. Welcome to another edition of the Five Star Zone. Big 10 Week 5 wrap-up. All the top 10 top teams in the Big 10 won their games. Ohio State won easily. Oregon won easily. Penn State pulls away, wins 21-7 to over Illinois. And Michigan wins, but it wasn't easily. Michigan beats Minnesota 27-24. to in a controversial ending where Minnesota appears to have recovered the onside kick, but the referees said no, they did not, and they were offsides. Upon further review, man, the refs couldn't have blew that. They couldn't have blew that any harder if they wanted to. That thing was it was ridiculous the way Michigan they they caught a break. They caught a break. And if if you're Minnesota, you're sitting around, if you're PJ Fleck, this is one of those things that, man. Fleck's job has to be on the hot seat, and 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 losing a game like this can't be easy for you because this would have been the feather in your cap. If you're Michigan, you won the game. You're in the top 10. But if you're a Michigan fan, you are not feeling good about this. If you are a Michigan fan, you realize you have to be able to pass the ball. Alex Orgy as your quarterback, not getting over 100 yards. Teams in the second half, whether it's USC or whether it was Minnesota, realized Michigan can't pass the ball, and they really attacked the run game and slowed it down. Michigan right now is Khalil Mullings, and that's it. He rushed for 111 yards, two touchdowns. He is the engine that keeps this thing going. It's Mullings and leaning on your defense, and and I don't know how sustainable that's going to be because occasionally, at some point, Michigan's going to fall behind. I don't know if it's going to be on the road this week at Washington, but Michigan's going to fall behind by double digits. That's when I'm going to find out what Alex Orgy is all about. Can Orgy become that guy? Right now, the recipe is hand the ball off, lean on the defense, win game. It ain't pretty. As a matter of fact, it's quite boring and methodical, but it works. It works for the Wolverine, but if you have higher aspirations of making it to the college football playoff, you're going to have to be able to pass the ball. You're going to have to be able to hit some deep targets. You're going to have to throw the ball to somebody other than Colston Loveland, and I don't know if that's going to go because when when I'm looking at Orgy and his deep throws, if I'm an opposing team, I'm just going to force him to throw the ball deep. I'm going to put eight, nine men in the box and just say, you know what, you got a challenge to that arm. They're winning. Right now, they are they're they're four and one. They're headed to Washington. Michigan gets the victory, and they still remain. Like I said, they're in the top ten. They're in the hunt for the college football playoff. But if you're a Wolverine fan, you got to be concerned about this quarterback situation. It's got to get fixed, and the bye week can't get here fast enough for the Wolverines. That's going to be not this coming week, but the week after that. And that's when you got to hope that Sharon Moore and the offensive coordinator can go into the lab and really come up with some plays to really accentuate the positives with Orgy and really work on his strengths. Because right now, as I said, I I don't think this this is sustainable. Uh, The Ohio State Buckeyes proved to be the top team in the Big Ten as they went out there and they beat Michigan State the way they normally do, 38-7. to Ohio State clicking on all cylinders. Heck, even the backup quarterback of Devin Brown comes in, throws the uh, Jeremiah Smith, the the, uh, the one-handed touchdown pass. Smith gets it, and you're just like, geez. He's going to be terrorizing the Big Ten this year, the year after that, and the year after that. He is him. This guy, this kid, is he is he is quite the receiver. Ohio State came in there, and, and Ryan Day said – They took care of the middle eight, which means the last four minutes of the first half and the first four minutes of the second half. That's where Ohio State took control of this game. It was a game that the Spartans looked like they were going to be competitive in, but then through turnovers and missed calls, Ohio State took advantage of that, scored, held Michigan State to some three and outs, scored again, and before you know it, the game was over. The Buckeyes win 38-7. to I want to focus on the Michigan State part of this game. Because when I look at the Michigan State Spartans, if you're a Spartan fan, you see frustration. You're frustrated. And it's not all Aiden Child's fault. I know that's the easy thing to say. Oh, Aiden Child's, you know, he threw another pick and threw a lot of errant passes that should have been picks. Yeah, this is true. But when I look at this Michigan State team, I think the word for me is frustration because Michigan State is a good team. They're an okay team, but they're not a great team, meaning you can win games, But you have to make your own break. You have to make your own luck. I say that by saying you got to come up with a better fourth and one play. 
instead of, you know, Aiden Child standing straight up and getting killed at that play. If you convert that, you're, you know, and you can go up seven to three on Ohio State, that's a perfect counterpunch to them driving down. Defense held them. Defense did their job once again. Offense didn't, except for if your defense is Spencer, you got to catch every interception you have. Michigan State, once again, you have to make your own luck, and that's turnovers. Spencer gets the ball thrown to him in the end zone. He drops it. After he drops it, the very next play, Ohio State scores a touchdown. Once again, that's creating your own luck. That's what the Spartans are not doing. When you're this caliber team, when you're void of of a lot of playmakers, you have to take advantage of these things, and Michigan State is simply not. The other thing you cannot do is turn the ball over in the red zone. Bellings, fumble. You know, it, it was actually a good pass. He turns, he runs, and he fumbles the ball. And, yes, Spartan fans, he did fumble the ball. It came out. You know, Childs fumbled the ball. Now, Childs fumble, I, I look at that as, look, it was a face mask that got missed. I don't know how the referees did not see that, but they didn't see it. He fumbles the ball, but that's yet another red zone opportunity. Michigan State got to the red zone three times, turned the ball over, whether it was on downs, fumble, fumble. That is potentially 21 points. I'm not saying you were going to beat Ohio State, but this is where if you add those 21 points, you're looking at what a 38 to 28 type of game where it really gives Michigan State something to build on rather than 38 to 7. Now, unlike most of the times that Michigan State played Ohio State, they were never in the game. This one was different because it did feel like the Spartans had an opportunity and then they were there for the first half. Until, like I said, right before Ryan Day calls it the middle eight, and that's when Ohio State separated themselves. Jonathan Smith, has he has found a way to cut down on the turnovers. I mean, not on the turnovers. He's found a way to cut down on the penalties. Three penalties against Boston College, two penalties against Ohio State. Now you have to cut down on the turnovers, and now you have to have a red zone offense because this team is really only scoring off of big plays. I mean, yeah, they, the Glover's touchdown was in the red zone, but three turnovers in the red zone. Think about it. Most of the Spartans' t- touchdowns this season have come off of big-time plays, big runs, big passes. You have to be able to just methodically go down the field and score and not waste opportunities, not rely on your kicker and Jonathan Kim, but you have to be able to score. You're going up against Oregon this Friday. Oregon is one of the top teams. Oregon just dispatched with UCLA. The game wasn't even close. As a matter of fact, Oregon kind of called off the dogs at UCLA. They're going to be ready for Michigan State. They're a big play offense, very similar to what Ohio State is. If you're the Spartans, once again, if you get the opportunity to get your hands on the ball, you have to be able to get the interception. you got to be able to get the fumble. If you could turn into a pick six, a scoop and score, that's how you will win games. You're not talented enough right now to just lean on the Jimmys and the Joes. You need to make your own breaks, and they're not doing that right now. And that's why they're now sitting there at three and two, staring at Oregon, who's you know a top five team in the nation. It's going to be a difficult Friday night for the Spartans, but if you don't shoot yourself in the foot, maybe, just maybe, you can shock the Oregon Ducks. So, as I said before, the other teams in the Big Ten all won. Penn State, the whiteout, they they outlasted Illinois. But I still want to say this, and it's about time that the AP, which I, I don't really have a ton of respect for because of the way the voting goes, because this team should have been in there a long time ago. But guys, Indiana may be the best team that nobody in the Big Ten is paying attention to. The quarterback uh, transfer Rourke almost threw for 400 yards, 389 yards to be exact, three touchdowns. Indiana's going to be a problem. They just they got rid of the uh, Maryland Terrapins at home, 42 to 28. The game was going back and forth. And then finally, Indiana just put their foot on the gas. Indiana, I, I got a feeling they're going to be a problem. They're going to upset somebody in the Big Ten. And Indiana's going to make a case for the college football playoffs. Just something to watch for. The schedule is not super tough either. So, Watch out for Indiana. They're the best team that nobody in the Big Ten is paying attention to. That is your Big Ten Week 5 wrap-up. We'll have a preview coming up later on this week. I'll have a special guest. 
You've seen him a lot. It's going to be Harold Sheldon from the Big Ten Network. He's going to join me later on this week as we preview the games for week six in the Big Ten. Until then, keep subscribing, keep watching, and keep telling your friends you've been watching the Five Star Zone.